If there's one thing that's not small about today's Mini, it's the range of versions. The Cooper models may steal the limelight, but the first and one are just as desirable and much cheaper. These two Minis have basically the same smooth 1.6-litre engine, and while the Ones is a little more powerful, both are fun to drive. They handle as well as any Mini, and despite the relative shortage of power, they're great fun on twisty roads. The ride is firm and sometimes bouncy, but not uncomfortable. Less happily, the Mini lets in too much road noise, and there's quite a bit of wind noise on the motorway. Like other Minis, these have a slightly cluttered dashboard with lots of dials and switches scattered across the cabin. It's a bit plasticky in places too, but it is well built and distinctive and there's enough adjustment for the driver's seat and steering wheel to find a comfortable driving position. These are hardly practical cars though, just getting in and out of the rear seats requires a fair degree of dexterity and the boot is small. It's the equipment that really betrays the two cars' entry-level nature. The One's kit is rather stingy, and the first is even more miserly. At least there's no shortage of extras and option packs. Even as standard, these aren't exactly cheap cars, but they have strong resale values, and you can keep running costs down with a fixed-price servicing package. Finally, if the Mini's good scores in customer satisfaction and reliability surveys are anything to go by, it's a pretty dependable car. These two may be the cheapest Minis, but they don't make you feel like you're sacrificing too much. They have the same image as the dearer versions, but cost less to run. Of the two, we prefer the One. It's better value for money, but still provides a thrill-a-minute drive and great desirability.